Mr. Mayor, we're now live. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the uh, welcome to up to March. We're not quite in spring yet, but we're on our way. Uh, roll call, clerk. Eaglin here. Courtney here. Carlo here. All right. Forty of the minutes from the last meeting, dated February sixteenth. Any uh, modifications or additions? I make a motion to approve the minutes. Mayor, I'll second Carlo's motion. Okay, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, thank you. First up, we have a, uh, a carryover from the last meeting, which was, uh, uh, what was the resolution number of that? Clerk? That was uh, resolution 11. Dash resolution 11 2021, which is a handicapped parking space request for 709 West 1st Street. The resolution is in your packets. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let our council here have a minute to get situated. You know, we're, we're just now on the part of the agenda relative to resolution number 112021 for, I'm sorry, yeah, resolution 112021 for the handicap arts and space. Tom, I might add there that, I mean, that has already been passed. Okay. So this was passed at the last meeting, and uh, we'll have the resolution in the packet today, and we'll execute the paperwork for that. So, number 11. 11. This is a resolution of the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, establishing a handicapped parking space at 709 East 1st Street. Whereas, there's been a request filed by Donald Courtney that the parking space directly in front of his residence be loc located at 709 East 1st Street, Madison, Indiana, be established as handicapped parking. Now, therefore, being resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that Section 1, the parking space directly in front of the residence located at 709 East 1st Street, Madison, Indiana, is hereby established as handicapped parking so long as Donald Courtney is a resident thereof. Upon such time as Donald Courtney moves from said residence, said parking space shall revert to regular parking. The City of Madison Street Department is hereby authorized to erect such signs and other traffic control devices as may be necessary to implement the intent of this resolution. This resolution shall become effective immediately upon its adoption of the Board of Public Works and Safety signature of the Mayor enrollment in the Book of Board Resolutions, published of notices required by law and posting of the appropriate signage at each intersection. Or if you'll notice in the minutes from February 16th, uh, Chief Wallace was here last uh, last meeting to present that. Uh, we did make a motion to go ahead and approve it uh, with this resolution being presented for signature today. So we'll have the minutes reflect that. Next up will be new business, which is a street closure request, and we'll maybe handle these together with uh, uh, Ms. Payne. Uh, the spring, oh, sorry. 12 and 13. Yeah. 12 and 13 for old court days. Okay, if we could, I would recommend we handle these somewhat in tandem. Yep. Because the only difference will be the dates. So, this is resolution number 12 and resolution number 13, a resolution of the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, regarding street closings for the 2021 spring and fall old court days. Whereas, there's been a request filed by Elsie Perry Payne on behalf of the Pilot Club of Madison for closings for said club in connection with the old court days to be held from May 28th, 2021 through May 30th, 2021 and September 24th, 2021 through September 26th, 2021. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Board of Public Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana that the following streets and parking lots, sidewalks, and parking spaces shall be closed from 6 p.m. on Thursday, May 27th, 2021 through 4 p.m. on Sunday, May 30th, 2021 and from 6 p.m. on Thursday, September 23rd, 2021, through Friday, through 4 o'clock p.m. on Sunday, September 26, 2021. And those streets are 2nd Street from Jefferson Street to Walnut Street, the city parking lot located at Jefferson Street and 2nd Street, the sidewalks and parking spaces abutting the east side of Jefferson Street from 1st Street to North Main Street, the sidewalks and parking spaces abutting the south side of Main Street between Jefferson Street and Walnut Street, 
and the parking spaces in the alley on the south side of the courthouse. Be further resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety in the City of Madison, Indiana, that the above, as closed, shall be under the supervision and control of the Pilot Club for the City of Madison for the year 2021. Good morning. How are you? Fine. Do you have some other information you'd like to share with us uh, about this, please? Um, Mr. Mayor and members of the Board of Public Works and Safety. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this time. The Pilot Club of Madison on March 24th will be celebrating 48 years serving the city of Madison and Jefferson County with our services. Pilot Club is a part of the Michigan Indiana District who is a part of Pilot International that will be celebrating their 100th year of service to clubs in five countries and all over the United States. I have been a member of the organization for 36 years, serving in every office on the club and district level, also serving two years as a director, one year as a secretary, one year as a chaplain, one year as a club builder coordinator on the international level. Pilot's main focus is brain-related disorder. Pilot is a volunteer service organization of men women, high school students, which are anchors, and college students, which is uh, conference members. Pilot's main focus is brain-related disorder international, uh, causes of campaigns, do more, care more, and be more. The ABCs of Pilot are Anchor Club, which is the youth development and leadership since 1952, brain safety and fitness, care for families in times of need. With our signature project called Brain Minders that are animal pup pup puppy puppets that go, we go to schools, nursing homes, etc., and perform with our puppets. Since 2000, we've had Anchor Club in three of our schools at the present time, only the Madison High School Anchor Club is active. Dan and I have taken some of these students to international conventions in St. Louis, Florida, Tennessee, and just to, just, just to name a few, we've taken them every place. Old Court Days is the club's only fundraiser, which we hold twice a year, and due to the virus, we could not, along with everyone else, host our show in 2020. So we are short of cash as well as others. So therefore we cannot donate to places and organizations that we normally donate to. We have received several letters asking for donations. One of our charter members passed away and donated $75,000 to the Community Foundation for a scholarship to a student that had has attended Madison High School for four years who volunteered in the community. That scholarship can go on this year, but the three pilot clubs given, three scholarships given by the pilot club will not be given this year due to low funds. Some of our projects that we have done, the youth shelter is one of our main projects due to the person who was instrumental in getting it started was a pilot and we donate semi-annually an annually fee of $1,200 to them and there are others that we donate annually. Some of our big donations are we purchased a lift for the pool at King Daughters Rehab on Michigan Road. Uh, that was with the help of a grant. A lift for the Salvation Army that was also with a grant. Um, we, we purchased six iPads for residents at the state hospital, and that was cash, a three-wheel bicycle at the state hospital, Valentine parties at the state hospital, computers for the library, several items for all kids can, help all the elementary schools in the county. We put a rocker glide uh, a cost of $6,000, which was cash, in the Hickory Creek Nursing Home, which we paid for. 
that is a, uh, it's like a swing and it has seats on it and a tray in the middle where they can put their cups and they can roll up on their wheelchairs into the swing. Um, it's, it's really nice, it's really nice. Um, the pilot club is needing members in order for the club to stay in Madison along with Oak Court Days, which is held in May and September. Along with a lot of visitors, along with a lot of visitors to Madison. Hmm, that doesn't make sense. So, <laughs> if you know anyone who needs something to do to help the city of Madison, keep Oak Day old court days on the calendar. I would like to thank the city for all the help you have given me and the Pilot Club of Madison. Also, since the passing of my husband, I will be leaving my beautiful Madison, <coughs> moving to Iowa to be with my only daughter and our great granddaughter, who Dan and I raised for 14 years who now lives in Iowa. <clears throat> Many of you know me and all the things I am involved with in Madison. I love Madison. I was born here and have not lived anyplace else. We need members and volunteers to help with Oak Court Days. We will take all that would like to join or just volunteer to help with Oak Court Days. I'm sorry. I'd like to introduce my sister, Sheila Cosby, who is a new member, and I'm trying to break her in. I don't know that she, <laughs> that she will do all of the legwork and all of the other kinds of things that I have been doing my whole life here in Madison. And I thank you for letting me have this time to talk about Pilot Club and my life in Madison. I wish we had any place else. I hope we continue to grow and thrive and pray for me as I leave. Thank you. Thank, thank you. You definitely have a legacy here in the city of Madison, and uh, I know there's a new chapter in your, your life. We had an opportunity to talk last week about how important it is to you to be near your, your family, your, your daughter, and your granddaughter. So we're going to miss you, and it sounds like Mrs. Cosby here is going to be uh, carrying the torch now for the community in, in your honor. So thank you for all your volunteerism and uh, service to the community and your husbands as well uh, to, to the city of Madison. Or do you have any questions for resolutions 12 and, were these 12 and 13? Yes, 12 and 13. I'll make a motion we approve uh, resolutions 12 and 13 for the uh, spring and fall old court days. And Mayor, I'll second the motion. Thank you, Mr. Perry, for all your service. Forward to this. Any additional discussion? Anybody from the audience? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Thank you very much. The next resolution is resolution number 14-2021, resolution of the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, regarding the street closing. Whereas there has been a request filed by Christina yeah. Jewell for a street closing in connection with her wedding to be held on Saturday, September 18, 2021. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that the east and west lanes of Broadway Street between Main Street and 3rd Street shall be closed from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, September 18, 2021. However, if the Trinity United Methodist Church located on Broadway Street has an event at that time, only the east lane will be closed. Be it further resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that said street as closed shall be under supervision and control of Christina Jewell at the times noted for the year 2021. Is, uh Christina here. Oh, are you representing? Yes. Okay, you want to come up, please. Yes. Thank you. For sure. How you doing? Good.
forward any questions with regards to resolution 14 2021 and it's a uh, street closure request for Fountain. And you say you will be in contact with the church to make sure that they don't have any events? Yeah, I'll have her call. Okay. Any questions from the audience? Anything else to add? No. Uh, let's pray for good weather. Yeah, well, I know that's what they're afraid of. I'll make a motion we approve uh, resolution 14 for the street closure for 16 June. Mayor, I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a, a motion and a second for resolution 14 2021. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Thanks, Cheryl. Thank you. See how easy that was. Yeah. Okay, um, we also have two resolutions here for River Fest and River Run. Kara, I know you're here, but you're not here for them. But, uh, and I think Katie had actually submitted those, but she is. Is she on maternity leave still? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm okay taking action on these if you are because, A, I, I love the fact that we're having a lot of events being organized now. So unless, unless the board feels they need a representative uh, here for this, I, I looked at the street closure myself, and it's, it's the same footprint as in prior years. So if it's okay at the board, we'll, we'll proceed. We have no changes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Joe? Okay, this is resolution number 15 2021, a resolution of the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, regarding street closings for the 2021 Madison River Fest Barbecue and Blues Festival. Whereas there has been a request filed by Katie Burgess on behalf of the Madison River Fest Committee for street closings in connection with the Madison River Fest Barbecue and Blues Festival will be held Friday, August 20, 2021 through Saturday, August 21st, 2021. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana that the following streets, parking lot spaces, grassy lots, and park shall be closed on from Monday, August 26, August 16th, 2021, 2021, at 2 p.m. through Monday, August 23rd, 2021, at 12 p.m. Vaughn Drive from the east side of Mill Street to the west side of Jefferson Street, Vine, Elm, Broadway, Poplar, Central, and West Streets, all south of First Street to Vaughn Drive, Parking spaces located along the north and south sides of First Street between the West Street and Central Avenue. First Street from the east side of Central Avenue to the west side of West Street. The grassy lot owned by the City of Madison located directly north of the restaurant slash ice cream shop and south of the alley running between West Street and Mulberry Street and Fireman's Park. We have further resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison and yeah, that said street parking spaces, grassy lot, and park as closed shall be in the supervision and control of the Madison Area Convention and Visitor Bureau and Madison River Fest Committee at the times noted above for the year 2021. And we've got resolution number 16-2021, the resolution of the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana regarding street closings for the Madison River Fest 5K River Run. Whereas there's been a request filed by Katie Burris on behalf of the Madison River Fest Committee for street closing in connection with the Madison River Fest 5K River Run to be held on Saturday, August 21st, 2021. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that the following streets shall be closed from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. on Saturday, August 21st, 2021. Vaughn Drive from Fireman's Park to the west side of Ferry Street. East Street from Vaughn Drive to First Street, First Street from East Street to Mill Street, Second Street from Elm Street to Plum Street, Plum Street from Second Street to Vaughn Drive, Vaughn Drive from Plum Street to Mill Street, Mill Street from Vaughn Drive to First Street, Vine Street from First Street to Second Street, Elm Street from First Street to Second Street, and Jefferson Street from First Street to Vaughn Drive. Be it further resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana that said streets as close shall be under the supervision and control of the Madison River Fest Committee at the time so for the year 2021. Folks, we just ran a 5K and you didn't even realize it, did you? <laughs> Thank you, Joe. I'll move that we uh, approve resolutions number 15 and 16 in conjunction with the 2021 
Madison River Fest Barbecue and Blues Festival. I'll just make a note here. Let me go ahead and get a second, then we'll have a conversation. Yeah, just uh, we want the. Can we get a second? I'll just start getting motion, Mike. Okay, there we go. And that's open for discussion. The uh, the 5K run. Uh, I don't know, maybe they get with Tony on the barricades and things. Uh, that they don't paint on the street. Uh, yes, and I just wanted to mention. Thank you, Dave. That was a good comment there. Uh, I just also wanted to mention. Uh, to as we approve all these street cl closure requests for the various events that they are still subject to whatever executive order from Governor Holcomb is with regards to uh, events and social gatherings are at the time. Fortunately, we are now in the yellow uh, county uh, uh, category, which allows more flexibility in the size and the outdoors, and particularly outdoor venue spaces, but. Uh, even outdoor events are subject to a public safety plan with the county health department uh, pursuant to Governor Holcomb's executive orders, which are changing from month to month. So hopefully we'll continue to see improvement there and uh, limitations will be eased as we uh, progress through the summer. Or any additional conversation on either of these requests? Anybody from the audience? Uh. Yes. I'm on the uh, Madison River Fest board. I just sent uh, Katie Burris a tech message with uh, the resolutions, and uh, she didn't have any questions in regards to it and uh, any, any further input because of, uh, there's been no changes to the footprint. Okay. Thank you. And we appreciate everybody who is volunteering to organize these events to uh, bring, uh, bring another unique uh, opportunity to our community. Um, anyone from the audience? Anyone else? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. All right. The next one is resolution number 17 2021. It's a resolution of the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, regarding the street and alley closings for the Hispanic Cultural Awareness Day. Whereas there's been a request filed by Dr. Shirley Clefford on behalf of the Casa Amiga for street, close, street and alley closings in connection with the Hispanic. Cultural Awareness Day to be held on Saturday, September 21st, 2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that the following streets and alleys shall be closed on Saturday, September 28th, 2021, from 12 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Third Street from the alley west of Eggleston Community Center to St. Michael's Avenue. East Street from Third Street to the alley south of Eggleston Community Center. The alley located on the west side of Eggleston Community Center and running north and south from 3rd Street to the alley running east and west between East Street and West Street. And the alley located on the south side of Eggleston Community Center running east and west from the East Street to the alley running north and south between Main Street and 3rd Street. We had further resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana that said streets and alleys shall be closed under the supervision and control of the Casa Amiga at the date and time voted vote for the year 2021. Board, uh, I would note that this is um, resolution number eight. Oh, sorry. This was delayed, so okay. we had given it a number uh, okay. probably a month or so back. So, okay. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Clark. I appreciate it. Good morning, Shirley. How are you doing? Good morning. Anything else you'd like to add for uh, the board's consideration today? Well, Dave Adams mentioned about one alley. I think it's a southern alley that some of the houses are there. We only wanted to, I mean, they could get in and out. We just wanted to close so there wouldn't be a lot of traffic while we're having the festival there. But the, we'd have to shut the street about 1 and open again about 10, but the festival starts at 4.30, so 4.30 to 9 would be the festival. This is the first time at Abelston, so we hope that it, it'll work out well. I think it's a good move, especially with the coronavirus, and now you can have your so are you saying that the alley would be open to through traffic for the house? That's the people, that's there are several houses there. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. they can get in and out to their homes. The other alley doesn't have any homes that they go to. It's just that southern alley, I think, that has some people. The third street to the alley running east and west between East Street and West Street? Is that a misprint of West Street? Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, it's in number three. The alley will get on the west I think side. I think it might say west of Eagleston. Oh. Instead of west street. Yes. Okay. It should be west of Eagleston. Yeah. West of Eagleston. And there aren't any homes that have their entrance on Right. That yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah. The ones on Main Street were the ones I had concerns with because of so many people on, on East Main. There between East Street and St. Michael's, use that alley for their parking and the garage and all that. So that's a very busy alley right there. But you vacated that, so we're yes. in good shape on that. But I think this should be corrected in number three. Yes. God, I got that correction. I think it's the West Alley by Eggleton instead of West Street. Yes. I think it's. Yes, I think it's correct. No, I wish that'd be a long yeah. closure. No, we don't want to. We just yeah. want it safe yeah. around the area that we Yeah, want. around that's the area. That's all we want. Yeah. yeah. That's going to be a nice spot, I think. For I you. think so. It'd be a good spot. I mean, it, it, it might even be more footprint space than at the fountain. But I was just curious why you go all the way over to St. Michael's Avenue. We're uh, not going all over to it. What's We're this? Just going, Third it shouldn't be. I asked for Third oh, Street the, from, uh, from Walnut to, to, uh, to the. I mean, at 4th Street. We are, Eggleston is on, on what? Uh, 3rd and East? 3rd and East, so oh. just around Eggleston okay, so and you, so the alley. Want, that's all we want. Okay, you don't want East Street to St. Michael's Church? No, we you don't, don't want, want to that there. Where are we used to play kickball when we're school? No, we're not going to. Okay. <laughs> just uh, the area where we're having the festival, so you right. say. Okay. Yeah, well, being the first time I get it. It's, it's yeah, I'm afraid that children might be in yeah. the street. So. This is one of the other festivals. This really helps us out. Oh, yeah. Well, the way I, the way I read this is it closes off uh, West, I mean, it closes off East Street. Yes. Is that, is that my reading that correct? Because mm -hmm. it says Third Street from the alley west of Eggleston, okay. all the way over to St. Michael's. So we're, we're block, aren't we, am I, am I, yeah, I that, aren't we blocking the intersection? St. Michael's is on 3rd Street. St. Michael's crosses East Street over to, I mean, it's, yeah. it, it's blocking this intersection. It, 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 it's not sound like that's your intention. Okay, my intention is just the streets around Eggleston. Okay, 3rd Street, Street goes all the way up to St. Michael's. And leave so. that one alley open where there are some residents that get yeah. into park. So maybe this should read Third Street from the alley west of Eggleston Community Center to East Street, yeah. which yeah. would put us on the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. the corner. Yeah, including the closure of East Street. So Not the closure of East Street, just to the, just to the corner. So they have that block on third. Right, right. So essentially, what you're getting is you're getting the perimeter around Eggleston Elementary School. Exactly. Okay. Right. All right. Which is Park East. I mean, our address is 419 East. So this is uh, just a reiterate, reiterate. Third Street from the alley west of Eggleston Community Center to East Street. East Street from Third Street to the alley. So you are blocking off that part of East Street. Yes. It sounds like. Uh, rather than it. Okay, so you are blocking off East Street. Yes. yes. We have to have the front of it blocked off. Okay, I, I didn't know if you were trying to have the festival inside the fenced area. We are having the festival inside, but yet there's a lot of people that will go back and forth just like they did at Broadway. It's true. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we know the perimeter now. Literally, is a square around Eagles. Yes. 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 All right. Ford, any other questions? The only thing I would request, <coughs> as with all street closings, you notify the neighbors. Yes, we do. That park and, you know, like the, the neighbors on East Street, the neighbors on 3rd Street, that their parking places are going to be affected by the street closure. Yes. Just notify those people so that they're aware of what's going on. We always on. get on Broadway. It'll be our first stop here. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I know. The, only, the only other thing I'm just throwing this out there, I'm not trying to meddle, but there are a fair amount of residences that go up Telegraph people that go up Telegraph mm -hmm. Hill, and is this going to significantly impact their ability to do that for that? They would have to travel on down to Walnut Street. You go to Walnut, 4th Street, and up. You go around. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, you're right, there is that. That's a main connector off of Telegraph Hill, but there is a way around it too. Yeah. Uh, or you could go on St. Michael's and go around the, yeah. to that intersection. You'd be blocked there at the end. Would you be blocked at Easton? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it sounds like well, Walnut yeah. Fort would be the main yeah. uh, yeah. course. And it's only for four or five yeah. hours. But there. Yeah. Uh, in reference to that, um, number two, for East Street from 3rd Street to the alley south of Avery Street. I'm, I'm wondering if maybe we should close off East Street between Main and 3rd because if people turn off of Main Street onto East Street, not knowing that they can only go to the alley, and they're going to have to turn around yeah. and come back. So I'm wondering if it would be less confusing if we blocked off East Street yes. at, at Main Street. I think that's a good point. Yeah. Because then they'd have to go down. Yeah. 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 And that could be used in that area there for parking. Yeah. And, you know, you have that would be there. Yeah. And then, like I said, that comes down to confusion. People starting right there and seeing a barricade at the alley. Yeah, they can only yeah. go a half a block and yeah. then there's a barricade, so they have to turn around. So. We'll just change the word third to main. Yes. And we'll be good. Mm -hmm. It won't be a long time, so they won't be. Right. Well, Joe says it's just going to be a few hours. So. Mm -hmm. No. You must change the number two. You're going to change yeah. east, east Street from, from third, third street to main. To main. Main. main Street. And then take out Alley South of yeah. to Community Center. I forget. Any additional conversation with the board or anyone from the audience? There's a motion to approve resolution 8-2021. Uh, make a motion, of course, with all the changes that we've made and uh, how to approve the uh, resolution number eight. I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Board, I have just got this and I think we passed it out um, and frankly it's it's not it's not in resolution form I, mean, I don't know why we really have to take this up today well I, I had asked I think Kara's here and we've been having some conversation about this uh, street closing request for the Mass of Chautauqua mm -hmm. and, and I thought she would have least introduce it even though we may not take action on it today uh but get the concept out there and get it out there with regards to what your plans are and first i want to introduce uh, carrie Hensey here and and thank you for uh your efforts to bring chautauqua back in 2021. our pleasure i do have an old um an updated copy of an old resolution if we want a copy of that we'll, we'll draft anyway. yeah thank okay. you okay um, this year, we would request that we make no um, footprint changes to our standard footprint that we have for Chautauqua, but we do um, want to make a couple of changes where we drop off our main shuttle from the high school. We will turn switch that from the Vine Street entrance to the Broadway entrance so that we can cut down some foot traffic on Main Street. And then we want to add an additional police officer security traffic patrol at the corner of Broadway and 2nd to help with some of the congestion that we get there on Broadway as people come down and try to park and, and things. And the mayor had asked if we could leave 2nd Street open for through traffic during the festival. I took that to our committee. Everyone felt like that was a very large liability that we weren't comfortable taking on having traffic going through that very busy intersection of Vine and 2nd Street. Yeah, just to clarify, so what I was trying to do is manage the traffic issues that seem to occur on Main Street, mm -hmm. uh, as well as blocking traffic on 2nd Street, which is why I, I had suggested in this now, since we've had the break, moving the festival footprint south of 2nd Street. Uh, you've indicated that you didn't want to lose that block between uh, on Vine Street between Main and 2nd Street. Mm -hmm. and so then, then I had suggested, well, can you manage the traffic then to still keep 2nd Street open? And I think you had took that back to your board and thought that that might be too much, of a, too much of a traffic management issue. 
and you're going to move the drop-off area you said down to First and Broadway. Yes. First and Broadway. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. I sent you an email today. Uh, I don't know if you saw it or not, mm -hmm. but it was also about golf carts. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing to try to manage golf cart traffic as well as vehicular traffic during the festival? Because golf carts are at a uh, really unique disadvantage because they can't go on Main Street mm -hmm. and they can't cross Main Street and literally go west. So how do you how do we how do we deal with that? Mm -hmm. um, I think if we have our additional security at Broadway and Second Street, that will help. Um, we can allow for golf carts if we need to add that to um, any of the ordinance or anything. We can add byways for golf cart traffic on 2nd Street and Elm Street. We don't want people driving their golf carts through the actual festival itself. But on Elm Street, where we have it closed between 2nd and Main, um, we do have that reserved for just resident parking. We don't have artist exhibits there, so we could use that as a through traffic for to get people to get their golf carts to the festival. We would probably have to figure out a place where they could park golf carts. Um, well, I'm less concerned about the parking of the golf carts. I mean, and, and based on our golf cart ordinance, they can't cross uh, except at a light, like except at an intersection that has a traffic light. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, this is for just, just discussion purposes only today. Leaving Second Street uh, open for golf carts, you have you'll have individuals managing intersections at Broadway and probably Vine Street. I think you indicated. We have block captains at Rome. If we need to add an okay. extra volunteer at Vine Street, that um, typically that's not open for any kind of traffic, so we don't have anyone specifically designated. Yeah. I'm wondering if we area. should, as far as traffic management, if, if we, the cars the cars can get around, golf carts can't get around. Mm -hmm. So I would ask you to consider uh, how do we manage golf cart traffic during that weekend because that is that will be a very busy weekend also for golf carts uh, out into the community mm -hmm. and they can't go west the way the footprint is now. Right. And I think if the concern is mainly golf cart traffic versus car traffic, we could probably manage that more accurate, you know, more effectively at that intersection. I think it was it's a very busy intersection intersection. So having car traffic going through there we felt like was just a really big liability yeah. um, and a safety issue. But we can definitely address that as far as having, or if the city wanted to provide some kind of traffic control at that intersection, that would be great. I know the Chautauqua budget, we've uh, accounted for extra security for Broadway and second, but I don't know if our budget can handle a second security officer. Well, I mean, hopefully they could get a volunteer for managing the traffic there, if it's just golf carts. Yeah, we're definitely. So for the next, so for the, for maybe for the next meeting, if you could come back and, and, and between now and then, talk with your committee about about golf carts. Mm -hmm. uh, let the off let our office know and we can modify this res modify the street closure request and resolution and get it on the next agenda if that's okay with the board. Yeah. I like the idea of the uh, shuttle traffic unloading the yes. first and broad. That caused a lot yeah. of congestion in uh, Main and Vine Street in the past. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of traffic that we can hopefully it'll be the same this year too, but yeah. more manageable. Yes, definitely. Any questions? Anything else for Kara? Kara, thank you. All right, thank See you in a couple weeks. Or should say. Okay, uh, moving on to Pace. Surprised to see you here today, Nicole. What happens when my planes don't leave? <laughs> uh, so, sorry, you don't have a PowerPoint because I, I was, wasn't supposed to be here. Uh, but you have two final reports, um, both from Sally Glass. The first one is 309 Elm Street. Uh, she received a grant uh, to work on her foundation um, from text warning to blocking in a pole shoot. Uh, that work was done according to her grant application. Uh, you'll have um, after photos as well as her whole final report in your packet. Um, her re reimbursement request is for $1,094. Okay, you want to give us the second one here? Yep. Both of them are worth uh, salad. Yep, the second one is for uh, 613 West 2nd Street. 
again for foundation work. Uh, she had to remove uh, quite a bit of standing water in that basement, um, so she secured that basement with a vapor barrier. Um, that work was all done according to her grant application. Um, so her um, reimbursement uh, request is for $4,775. particularly like the one picture with Sally smiling <laughs> and uh, taking a picture of the PACE uh, program sign in the window. It was a nice personal touch. It was a great touch. Thanks, Sally. She's not here, but thank you. Love the work the PACE program is doing. I have no problems with the, uh, the, the pay applications. Board, do you have any questions? No. I'll make a motion here that we approve the uh, payment applications for 309 Elm Street and 613 West 2nd Street. Can I get a second? I uh, will second your motion. Any, additional, any additional discussion? Any comments from anyone in the audience? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to note, too, uh, PACE is still ap accepting applications. However, the funding is getting tighter. So if anyone is interested in applying, I recommend applying sooner rather than later. Thank you, Nicole. When's the due date for the next uh, application? Right. April 5th. April 5th. Okay. And uh, Deputy Mayor McGee, you have a grant update for us? Good morning, board. Uh, you may have already heard this, but I'm not on the radio, but I wanted to let you know officially that we received notification last week that we did receive the Federal Highway Grant that I applied for back in December. So a total of uh, a little over $5 million, what uh, we received from federal money is $3.872 million. Our match is 20% of that, so 1.2, which we already have set aside for that purpose. So. Uh, a little more than that, actually. So we're in good shape, and that is for the 2026 uh, funding period. So that is the period we're looking at between now and then while we do the Main Street redesign, and we'll have uh, quite a bit of time to help go toward that project. So I'm going to let you know. Uh, Mindy, uh, that was 3.872. 3.872. That. Uh, that grant was a long time coming and certainly is going to help us do the necessary upgrades for uh, Main Street since we had taken over Main Street last summer and this will allow us to make those those uh, street improvements from Jefferson Street all the way to the top of Hanover Hill, correct? correct. And that is 2026 funding round and then what we're working on this year is to uh, do a do a paving project that will extend the useful life of this road in another five years and get us to 2026. So part of this was an overall strategy, but by 2026, we will have spent almost $6 million on uh, that stretch of road. And we do have a uh, Main Street Steering Committee. They met again last week, and we're going through several different design uh, renderings and uh, to try to improve crosswalk safety, multimodal, um, forms of transportation, and also acknowledge the fact that we don't have a state highway anymore going through or downtown, but we have a very vibrant central business district with, with, which is anchored on the west end residentially and then the center mixed use. So there's a lot of work still to be done. Uh, good job on the grant. I know that, that you and Tony and Gina and others worked very hard on that. It was a very uh, comprehensive grant application and I'm sure that that is why we awarded it this round and there were only what two or three other cities in the state of Indiana who received a grant larger than the one we requested right. so I think there were four yeah four and uh, so good job thank you also uh, would update the board that the fall CPMG from last year is actually out for bid right now that it will be the liquid asphalt on that same stretch of road that will hopefully bridge that gap and get us to 2026 when we're ready to do uh, milling and paving on it, but uh, that is, that'll start soon, probably April, May timeframe. And uh, Alyssa Folt, our grant writer, has applied for a crosswalk safety grant that we're hoping to use in combination with that and upgrade uh, some of the safety features at some of the more dangerous crosswalks. So 
a lot going on for Main Street right now. Good job, Ben. Thank you. Okay, next up we have an alley vacate request for Heritage Trail Conservancy. Can now say good afternoon, Bob. Hi, thank you. Thank you for the privilege of coming before you, um, board and uh, mayor, and uh, and I'd like to thank you for the um, efforts that you have put into place to uh, Joe to make this vacation possible, uh, hopefully down the road. Uh, this is my 15th year uh, working on trails and parks in Madison, and we own approximately 23 acres now in Madison, which is an extraordinary amount of real estate dedicated for public green space. And I'm thrilled to see all the people. I was out working, cutting up a tree on the Harry Trail Hillside yesterday. You can't believe the amount of people that were from out of town and people that are relocated here in Madison. One person from Wayne County, another person from Central Ohio, and someone from some other location. I was astounded that all these transplants were out walking on the hillside, but it made me feel good that my efforts clearing off a tree was being, uh, benefiting them that, that yesterday. So uh, this uh, property we, we bought, and uh, because of the due diligence of uh, our surveyor, John Cooner, he picked up that there were two, what I call from out east, we call these paper alleys, they're put down on a plat and never really utilized for any alleyway or street use. And uh, so he put those on our, um, and I think the board members, they all have a picture of, uh, yes. of, of what we have, and, and uh, for the audience, this is kind of what we're talking about here. And uh, this is our little alleyway. And so uh, we're just kind of uh, reasoned, uh, one of the alleys has one of our buildings built on it. And uh, so I don't know what we do about that. The other one is we've been cutting the grass and trees are growing up on the other one, so they uh, obviously haven't been used for decades. And uh, I would hope that the vacation of these alleys uh, would be the most non-controversial vacation of alleys in the history of Madison because <laughs> they're just kind of grassy spaces and uh, no one's ever used them for <coughs> transporting uh, cars or anything else down. Uh, why are we asking for a vacation? I think just to tidy up uh, our uh, parcel down there, so it looks a little bit uh, more contiguous uh, and complete. Um, and I think uh, granting this request will signal to investors uh, that the City of Madison is assisting us in every way possible to help Heritage Park reach its full potential. And again, I want to stress that this park is here for the community, and uh, we're dedicated to everybody using our park. And some of these street closures, I'd welcome some of these people to come down and use Heritage Park so you won't even have to close any streets because we have a lot of real estate down there, even more since November 17th. A lot of parking, but we won't have to do any street closures. So I would welcome anybody having you know, festivals and so forth to come down and utilize our park. And I think, uh, Mayor, you were down there from the uh, music uh, uh, festival that we had there, wasn't it? And, I think that group found it very acceptable. Uh, I'm there on the trail a lot. Yeah, so yeah, he's, he's watched me work for the last uh, almost 15 years yeah. on the trail. So uh, that's about all I have to say is that we just want to, uh, the only uh, question about utilities, and uh, in the past uh, the city utility personnel didn't have an issue. Uh, they just put a new sewer line through there and it wasn't anywhere near the, where these alleys are going to be vacated. But the only uh, utility that had an issue was Vector, and they just, and we uh, well know their uh, utility that runs through there. They, uh, we've had a great relationship with Vector, and they've given us grants in the past to do things on the trail and park. And they just two years ago did about $20,000 worth of work right there uh, where this alley is. They removed a big uh, mound there. It was very dangerous because it's on a six inch high pressure gas line. They came in and worked two or three days clearing it up. So we have a great relationship and uh, they just ask that in this vacation that their rights, which we would never violate anyway, are reinforced again in regard to what we want to have to do, uh, anything we want to do there. So uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions. I'd be glad to learn and answer them. I can probably just kind of explain the process to the board because it's been a while, frankly, and I don't know if some have not. This is kind of the first step uh, where they're going to come before the board is what they're doing now with this petition. And then if the board approves uh, you know, them going forward, 
The next step is to provide notice. In this situation, notice is going to be pretty easy. They will publish it in the paper, but they don't have to send out any notices because they're the only ones that own the land around it. So um, it becomes pretty easy. And then they'll come before the Common Council for final uh, determination. Yeah, so first step today is to acknowledge the petition. Um, have the board, board and the uh, audience gather here today, discuss it, and give a favorable or non-favorable recommendation that to the petition, and then there'll be a public hearing, as Joe mentioned, and then presented to City Council for an actual uh, approval of the ordinance to vacate the property. I believe, Brian, we've already confirmed there's no utilities for the City of Madison that is running through there. Uh, our utilities are, uh, uh, I believe, west of actually those, those, two, those two tracks. So, City of Madison, from our perspective, uh, Bob, we don't have any issues with it. I'll leave it up to the, the board, ask any additional questions, and then we'll go through the process to uh, uh, move to. I was down there today, Bob showed me what was going to be out there, so we just common sense is closing. So, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the petition to the Common Council on, the, on this item. I'll second uh, <coughs> Board Member Eaglin's uh, motion to uh, give a favorable recommendation to the Common Council of the petition to vacate uh, the alleys represented here in this petition. Any additional discussion by the board? Any discussion from the audience? Is it yay or no? Nay, okay here? Yes. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. The work that you're doing, too. I mean, it's fantastic. And again, I thank you for the effort that you helped uh, to make us get to this point that it can now be uh, go on to the uh, city council and the public. Uh, public we don't like public. to wait around. We just talked about this last week, and here you are today. I know. I know. That's pretty quick. <laughs> so I'm expressing my gratitude rather emphatically today how much yeah. I appreciate the effort because these vacations are sometimes not the easiest thing to do. But as I said when I stepped up to this podium, I hope they'll be the most non-controversial vacations. <laughs> as, they sh as they should be, Bob. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very Thanks, much. Bob. Thanks, Bob. I think that's it for new business, and we'll move to claims. Mayor, I have an opportunity to review the claims. With that, I'll make a motion that these claims be approved as submitted. I will second David's motion. Okay. Any additional discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Under Mayor's comments, not a whole lot to add here. Just again to reiterate that uh, I'm really grateful that there's so much planning going on across the community for events uh, uh, in the city of Madison and Jefferson County and all that. that we're, we're doing our best to revive our tourism economy. You know, in 2018, there was a Rockwell study commissioned by the, the city of Madison uh, with the uh, Indiana uh, Tourism Development Destination Corporation. And it indicated that uh, tourism is about $50 million economy, uh, contribution to our economy uh, across a lot of different sectors, whether it be wages and salaries and uh, lodging, as well as retail and other types of money spent here. It creates tax revenue for us. So I'm grateful that everybody is doing their best to bring back uh, Festivals. Uh, we generally, pre-COVID, would have enjoyed uh, 300,000 visitors approximately a year to the city of Madison. We're operating under different circumstances this year, as I mentioned a little while ago. Uh, while our statistics are improving, we're still going to be subjected to whatever Governor Holcomb's executive orders are at the time. That places limitations on indoor and outdoor gatherings, but at least the work is, is being uh, uh, put forward and that work's all being done by volunteers uh, working with partnerships with the Chamber, Madison, uh, Madison Main Street, the City of Madison, Jefferson County Board of Tourism, and all the groups uh, across our community who really work hard to bring uh, you know, unique things to the City of Madison, so I'm grateful for that. I'll also mention, I don't think Nicole is still here, Board, but we wanted to let you know in case you, you missed the announcement last week, but. Uh, the Crystal Beach um, uh, bidding was uh, publicized in last, I want to say, last week's The Mass and Career. So we're excited to finally have that part of the seller 
um, a strategic investment plan be implemented. So we are, we're doing online as well as uh, uh, just normal bidding process and those bids will be opened up probably, I think, in sometime in April here at the Board of Public Works and safety. But it will not interrupt the 2021 season for all of you uh, uh, water aerobics fans that are out there. Please be assured that you'll still have your classes this year. Uh, Brian, I know that uh, that's very near and dear to you. So I want to make sure that we don't interrupt any, any water aerobics. And, uh, but after, we'll start some construction free, free pool season and then we'll start in earnest at the end of uh, the 2021 full season. I don't have anything else to, to add, but uh, one of my favorite parts of all of our public meetings is opening up the, the podium and the floor to anybody in the audience who would like to address uh, the Board of Public Works and Safety. Anybody here that would like, yes? I'm glad I say you, because there's a couple of things were brought up that I hadn't thought about. Okay. Um, the one is the city now owns Main Street, correct? Yes. Do we well, from Jefferson to, to the top of Hanover Hill. Okay. Do we have to go, does Pilot Club have to go to the county council now? Well, we don't own that section. You don't own no, that part, so to, we still have to go there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. If you're still doing around uh, the courthouse. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Okay. My next question was um, carts. We don't allow bicycles and things through our show but um i know last year we had one of the um people health people come through on the cart and they said they were just checking and i said well i don't think you're supposed to be coming through the crowd because the health department person was on a go yeah course. okay yeah um now, do we need to, and since carts are so available now and everybody are using them, do we need to put notice on our signs we put on the cars that no carts are allowed through the... If you want to, I mean, you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna have the full, your footprint's a lot smaller than the one we were talking about with Chautauqua. So there's gonna be ample space for golf carts to go around your, your venue area. Yeah, go around. Yes, yes, go around. Yes. Uh, so if you want to print up signs uh, that also say no golf carts allowed, that's that's fine too. Well, and I'm assuming you'll have barricades across, across, which would prevent them from entering too. Yeah. Because and plus, you have you have your you have your booths on Second Street, uh, which is a little different than what the Chautauqua does. But Second Street is closed. Second Street is closed. It's closed. Yeah. We have we have booths on both sides of yes. the street, and the street right. is open to. Um, just for yes. yeah. um, Okay, so, you know, yeah, there's not much room, but, you know, people take advantage of doing what they want to do when they want to do it. And well, that, that's why it's important <laughs> to have enough volunteers that are uh, monitoring the blocks and making sure that things stay in order. Yeah, well, we have people there monitoring this. And the other thing was, uh, I failed to mention that we the group from Scottsburg will be assisting with uh, pilot club of Madison their pilot club in Scottsburg so there will be some uh, pilot club members working with us um, our insurance is still covered by pilot club because they are part of pilot club also uh, but just be aware you will be talking to some different names that are not here in Madison. Okay. Um, I, I did not put that in my letter, but... Um, if there's a main point of contact with a phone number in case uh, there's an issue and yeah. someone from the city that weekend can reach them, that'd be perfect. Yeah, um, I have it on our forms, uh, the person that would be in charge and a phone okay. number and a email address and, and all of that. I just... Uh, I usually watch this on TV, but I'm glad I stayed and listened to this so I could ask these questions. I think that is the only... 
Oh, if we can't reach you, we'll just call Sheila 25 times that week. <laughs> yeah. Her, her, her phone number will be on there also. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Anyone else? Yeah. Well, good afternoon, good afternoon. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor and board members of council. Uh, Phil Mullins, 770 Main Street. And I know that uh, the mayor and the deputy mayor did hear from me. Uh, you know, a few weeks ago, we uh, raised an issue regarding the uh, bump that was left um, there at the near our house at the intersection of, of Baltimore and Maine. And it was really annoying. Um, you know, it caused, I mean, it sounded like many explosions literally hundreds of times a day. And, we pointed that out to uh, in our meetings with the uh, NDOT and uh, um, and Kyle Lee, you know, regarding the damage we had a home as well uh, from the construction. And I know that we complained to him and we complained uh, officially to NDOT, but I'm sure it's the advocacy of the mayor and the deputy mayor. And I really appreciate the deputy mayor's personal call. I know we communicated uh, in person, or I mean, electronically. Yeah. But I want to thank you and the city person. You're welcome, Bill. For being so uh, such strong advocates. Uh, part of the, <clears throat> and we're also very grateful for the street lights. I guess one of my neighbors didn't like it too well, but I can think I'm just talking about one uh, ranger on that. Uh, it's really made a big difference, uh, and I guess it makes it feel more like we're all part of Main Street along there. Um, one thing I do, Owen, as you're in the continue the oversight role, is the uh, is the trees. I know, um, Mayor, you might remember vaguely. You had a meeting last summer. Ironically, it was right in front of our house. Right. And we had mentioned the, the fact about the trees to try to make sure the replacements were, well, as hardy as could be, uh, to make sure that they were more mature than just, uh, well, unfortunately, what was placed out there. And I had spoken to Kyle Beatty about it at the time because we all know how upset it was about a year ago when that 100 year old tree was taken out. Uh, now I, I realize it may not have been in great shape, and we can all respect that. But I, I asked uh, Mr. Beatty to reach out to the tree board and the city. Uh, maybe to clip the falls. I mean, we briefly discussed that to see if there's an alternative that could be more community based because it has not just the standard issue little twigs that are going to take 20 years to get 10 feet high. And unfortunately, that's what they planted. So I would strongly recommend that um, in your next round of discussions with them to um, see if they could do something a little better than that. Okay. And then uh, while it's not really a city matter, but there are several claims, you know, from Myself, my wife, and I, and our neighbors, you know, regarding damage that we've had. Our uh, retaining wall we had in the front uh, collapsed as a result of uh, the damage by the uh, contractor. And, uh, you know, it's just really, I would say uh, the negotiations have been frustrating, to say the least. Now, it's not a city matter, we realize that. You know, I filed a tort claim, which is what we were instructed to do, and we had them. But uh, there were a couple of things that I found. Uh, well, a little disturbing because, you know, we, we did uh, on our case grant, and again, we're very grateful for that uh, opportunity. When we've, uh, we plan to use most of that grant, <coughs> much as we had on our application, to make sure that we, uh, you know, it's really taking care of our exterior painting, the shutters, and, you know, typical things, and that's going to pick up most of it. But uh, the contractor asked me, is the case grant going to be applied to? Could they use that, you know, to help take care of some of the the expenses, and I, I don't know if that's inappropriate. Um, I, I have, you know, I'm not the one to judge on that. I don't think that's going. I responded to him. I don't think there's any money left because we did actually put it on our application. But that's before I knew really what alternatives we had, whether homeowners insurance or whether NDOT would cover, etc. So, um, but I would say again, it's just been very frustrating in that regard. So, uh, and I have emails all out of there that does it has of any interest to the board or the city. And uh, like I say, I guess the old adage is, even though the wall we had was not in great shape, but you know, if you run into my Maserati or my minivan, you gotta fix it. So that's really kind of the way that we, uh, we look at it. But again, we're very grateful for the oversight role and we're happy that, you know, that, you know it's much better transportation. Uh, uh, it's gonna be a better flow of traffic for everybody. So we're very grateful for that. So with that, thank you very much. So I just want to say uh, thank you. Thank you to all the neighbors for your patience because you guys have been in the heart of that construction zone for 
over a year. Uh, I know there's still some work to do. They're gonna they're gonna redeploy back to the site uh, probably at the end of this month. Uh, you know, as the weather warms up, and hopefully finish quickly, and they'll be out of there. And uh, but thank you for your patience and all the neighbors down there. It is it's definitely a beautiful improvement. Uh, definitely a much better traffic management flow of things. Uh, but it did come at some some cost uh, and aggravation and. Uh, with all the earthwork that they were doing down there, and particularly with the heavy equipment that they're utilizing, it does sound like there were there might have been some some buildings damaged. So hopefully, we'll be able to resolve that amicably. Right. And John Stacer has been, you know, as Dylan uh, appreciate would be very uh, has been very helpful and supportive to all of us who had that. And uh, in fact, he came to the meeting when we had about 12 in dot back in November. And uh, I think he gave them a very good uh, short lecture on what uh, historic preservation means in, uh, in Madison, Indiana. But uh, we're still, <laughs> but we're still facing our challenge. And then the last thing I would say, uh, to the point of, of messaging, uh, I mean, I know the last posting on the for Project 421 uh, update was about the street lights, which I think was was great and well done. But uh, they do use an outside firm for their for communications, so they have to communicate that to someone else. So. You know the, the last stage is important as well for everybody. So I would encourage you know again in your uh, in your communications with uh, the contractor and that uh, to make sure that they try to communicate as well as possible uh, through the website you know through the Facebook page and through the group page. Again, thank you so much for your consideration and advocacy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here would like to address the board? Board, anything else? Yeah. Uh, make a motion to here. Second that motion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 I'll close. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Uh, enjoy the, your weekend. Welcome to March. Right now, concrete wall.